refresh on what we covered uh, on course settings. Yesterday also started us on how to create, how to upload resources, because resources are going to form a key part of your online course that we will be using to share learning materials to the students. And that's actually where I want to start today. Uh, a recap of what we did yesterday in terms of uh, adding resources. And we're also going to cover a greater scope of other types of resources that you can add to your Moodle course. So I'm going to cover URL, page, folder, and file, as it was indicated. Then the topic on creating groups, I will, I'll, I'll actually cover it, but towards the end, towards the end of the session, that's when I'm going to look at how to set up groups in the course. And uh, it, is in, uh, it is in response to the question that was asked by Dr. Muhambe and also I think uh, Dr. Nangila Aneti. Okay, so I'll share my screen now. Uh, the the Alupe site is uh, being migrated to a more stable uh, server. I'm reliably informed by Bosley that uh, your system admin is working on that. And your site should be ready by next week in a more stable environment. So what will happen is as soon as that is done, I'm going to put up a, a whole training space with all these materials. So that even beyond this training, uh, we don't know when the, COVID, the next COVID or lockdown may occur and we may require to go back to, to e-learning. So it, I'm foreseeing that it will be a useful resource for Alupe University in the future for cutting on out your internal trainings. So I'll just structure a full training space and I'm going to put up um, resources on your, on your learning management system facilitate your own TOT training, trainer of trainers. Uh, because I believe part of the team members that are in this training would uh, possibly become trainers of other faculty who are not part of the, this training. Okay, so that's it. Let me go back to my topic, which is adding resources, adding resources to a Moodle course. And the resources, as I noted, are a very important part of your course because it, they allow you to share materials to the students. And so I'll go back to the first resource, which I covered yesterday, which is called a folder. So remember, anytime you want to edit your course, you must start by turning editing on. So on the top right corner, you should be able to see the edit mode button, edit mode button at the top right corner. So I'm going to turn editing on so that the course is in edit mode. As soon as the course is in edit mode, we can now be able to navigate to the topic where you want to add the, the resource. Like for example, this is my topic one. This is my first topic. Remember the course is segmented into topics. So the, each section corresponds to a topic. So uh, wanting to add a, a, a folder, at the end of, at the very bottom of that first section, which is should be topic one, there is a link indicating add an activity or resource, this one. This, I'm just highlighting it so that you can be able to see it clearly. Add an activity or resource. So um, we're going to use that. Uh, to, we're going to click on it. Once you click on it, the activity and resource chooser will pop up. We call this the activity and resource chooser. It's actually the same in all Moodle platforms, the same as in the institution. Now, once you click on it, um, then you're able to navigate to the resource type which you want. In this case, we want to add a folder. You see the resource type that we want to add is called a folder. Now, the, uh, so we are going to click on folder option. I'll click on it. It's going to require me to put in some settings. The first setting is the name of the folder. Preferably give it a name that corresponds to the resources of the topic. So in this case, this is topic one resources. Huh? So I'm going to call this topic one resources. And then in the description, it's good to always put a description. The description is like guiding information to the learner as they interact with the materials. So in this case, I'm going to, I'm going to provide the learner with three reading resources. And I'm going to instruct them on what I want them or how I want them to interact with the reading resources. So I'm going to indicate read the provided, or I'll start by indicating that you have been provided with three reading resources. 
so maybe one of the resources are journal article. Like I know Dr. Muhammad usually has so many ebooks, and you may want to refer to a specific page in the ebooks. Then you so you can put that instruction and say, in the second resource, which is an ebook, ebook by you can indicate the ebook, it is by who so and so. Um read page maybe page 45 to 60. Okay, so you want to guide them so that they are reading only a specific section of the book. Okay, and make summaries. And make summaries to aid your, your participation in the discussion forum. Well, remember, we talked about building activities, learning activities. The acquiry level activity is actually the most bare minimum. So in the case, like, because they are, this is a reading activity, so that is an acquiry activity. But over and above the acquiry activity, you need to build on it. So we are going to build on this acquiry activity by a discussion forum. So in the course, in the same topic, we're going to add a discussion forum and add discussion questions which relate to the contents of that topic. So once you have given a description, you should be guiding instructions to the learner. In the other part, the content part, you are expected now, this part, uh, this content part here, we are now going to um, upload our materials one by one. So I'll click on this icon or this arrow, whichever. Then I choose the option, all files, choose file. Then I pick the resource. Okay, I'm going to pick on the, let me pick something that is in drive, uh, that is in drive D. So let me pick a document like this. Okay, ramp up guide on machine learning. That is my first document, but that's my first reading resource. And I'll give it time to attach. Now let me pick something that is lighter so that it doesn't take so much time. So that I demonstrate it quickly. So assuming that is the first resource, I'm attaching it. So it is attached, actually it attached the first one. Let me attach the second one, which should be this. Then I click upload file. I hope the steps are clear from your end. Mostly you can follow through the, from the phone as you're traveling. Yes, it's clear with me. Okay, so then we can come up and add another resource. That is the third resource. So you can add as many resources in a folder. So in in, in uh, sorry, it's still uploading the previous one. So let me add the sec the third one. So in a in the folder, you can add all your reading resources. You can put them together in a folder in the topic. Okay, it's good to always if you have more than one reading resource, put it in a folder in the topic. So once that is done. You can save and display or save and return to course, whichever, all will serve the same purpose. So you notice what I have done. I have added in my topic one, I have added a folder and the folder is topic one resources and the instructions that I added in the description are provided there below the resource. So that is how you add a folder. So that is how you add a folder to your course. So assuming I want to add just one reading resource, if you only have one reading resource, which you want to add to your topic, it's best that you use what you call a file. You use the, the, the resource type called a file. And to do that, just as we did before, make sure you have turned editing on, click add an activity or resource. In the activity and resource chooser, make sure that you pick the option file. Able to see it? Yes, here. So pick the option file. So that's what I'm going to pick, um, file. Then after I've picked file, just like in the previous case, you put the name of the file. So this is the topic one notes. Then you can give a description, which would be instructions to the learner. So you can tell them, uh, read the provided notes and make a summary in preparation to the um, group worker. So maybe or beyond uh, 
after this reading, you expect me to participate in the some group work. Eh? And then you come and attach the file. So I'm going to attach that file, upload this file, just like in the other case. Okay, so it is attached. Once it has, it's attached, you can save and return to course. So that is how you add uh, a file if in the case of one reading resource or a folder in the case where you have multiple reading resources. Now let me cover about another type of resource called URL. So I'm going to look at what you call URL. URL. So URL resource is a good one if you want to provide links to your course. So you may have gone online and you have uh, come across an interesting link. So let's go online. So, and uh, you may have, the, the, I usually like to search using ad, Google Advanced Search. Huh? I usually like to use Google Advanced Search. Huh? The reason why I like to use Google Advanced Search, it, is, uh, it allows you to you notice down here, it allows you to filter the resource types, the resources that you 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 want by usage rights. There's what we call OER. We know about open educational resources, OER. So you want that the search results huh, should uh, include only open educational resource materials. So if you want to do that, it is best that you use Google Advanced Search in your searching. So if you have already come to that point and you may want maybe a resource on uh, AI policies in education. So I want a resource on AI policies. Eh? Then I want it to give me um, only materials which are free to use, share, or modify. These are the CCBY. They're usually the, denoted by CCBY, they are the most open uh, educational resources because it allows you to share, modify, even commercially. There are other open source uh, licenses like free to use or share, free to, to use, share, and modify, okay? There are others which are free to use, share, even commercially. In this case, you will find that there are CCBYND, you find such, uh, uh, when you search for the resources, you'd find them denoted like CC, CC, BY. Okay, so you'll find CC, BY, and then it's indicating ND. If you see ND, it means you cannot make changes to that resource. You have to use it as it is. But sometimes you may find that it's CC, SA, means CC, BY, SA, means share alike. So it means, if you create new derivatives, if you get to use that resource and then you, pro you you make modification, you can only license it with the same license that is CCBYSA, share alike. There are others which is CCBYNC. So if you find anything indicating non-commercial, it means that that resource cannot be used for commercial purposes. So there are six types of OER licenses, and these are you get the Google search, you can actually be able to get the one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five types of licenses. Uh, so the free to use or share, which is CCB, uh, BY, can be BYND, non derivatives, share like, non commercial. You can have this free to use, share even commercially. Right? So even these ones, you can use them to make money. So anytime you're using Google Advanced Search, you can actually specify the usage rights or the licenses for the resources which will be suggested to you. I usually like to use the one which is free to use, share, or even modify because I may make modifications on that resource huh, before I use it on my course. So that being said, uh, you can see it's giving me some resources which I can then look academic publishing guidelines on AI usage, um, AI skills for professors. So it, it is giving me quite a number of resources that I can actually look at. 
Um, maybe I may want the resources specifically PDF. You can specify to Google. So using Google Advanced Search, you can actually uh, search for resources. So let me come to this one. I may want this AI as a system technology, policy for AI as a system technology. So I'm interested with this link and I want to include it on my course. So what you simply need to do is copy the URL from the URL bar, then come to your course, come to the specific topic, click add an activity or resource. Remember the resource that you want to add is called URL. URL, so let's look for URL, or you can just search for it here, URL. Yeah, it's here. So the URL is very simple to implement. So here, I just paste the link here. At the external URL, you paste your link there, then give it a name. Uh, in the, the name of the resource is AI, poli AI policy, okay, in systems. I think that was it. Then here, within the description, you can provide instructions to the learner. So you tell them, visit the provided site. and read the section on AI policy in systems deployment. Maybe if that was the topic that I'm covering. Huh? Okay, so maybe the website has so many pages. So in the description, you can give further guidance or instructions to the learners on which particular resource they need to focus on. At the appearance, you can set how you want it to open. I usually like to use the appearance option of open. So when the user clicks on the link, it automatically opens the page in a new tab. Then you can save and return to course. So there, we have added a URL resource on our course. We've added a URL resource on our course under topic one. Was it topic one that I was dealing with? Okay, let me just scroll down. I should be able to get it. Yes, it is here. So you can see I've added a URL resource. So in case you intend to have additional materials which are in form of links to external uh, websites or external um, uh, websites, preferably let's use a URL. So we've seen how to use a folder, a, a file, and now a URL. At that point, I'll pause. And if there's a question, please, you can, you can ask your question. So welcome, Sarah, Catherine, Catherine Muya, and Catherine. Welcome to the meeting. So do we have questions or do we have uh, any? Thank you. Yes. Go ahead. You can. If you have a question, you can go ahead. Barbara, I think I missed out on the file attachment. Eh? I think I was struggling with my gadget kindly. I got the URL. Okay, thank Thanks. you. Okay, thank you, Sarah, for that. I'll repeat the steps of adding a file. Thank you, I'll do that. Anyone with us, another request? I can, I can ask your request. Okay, so if there's no question, I'll go to the next step. So just a minute. Okay, sorry, I was just responding to a call. Uh, uh, based on the request that has come in, I'll, I'll take us through the steps of attaching a file again, uh, step, attaching a file again. So step number one, you must turn editing on. You must make sure you're in edit mode. And to do that, 
on the top right corner, there is the edit at edit mode button. Once you have edited, turned your ed course into edit mode, you navigate, scroll to the topic where you want to add the file. Eh? So in this case, I'll come to the next topic. So this being my topic two. I want to attach a resource, a reading resource to topic two. So to do this, I'll simply come to the very uh, end of topic two. There is a link indicating add an activity or resource. I'll click on the link. So in the activity chooser, I pick the option file, this one. Okay. I indicate the name of the file. So this would be topic two notes. Then I can give a description which would be guiding instructions to the learner related to that resource. So I may tell them, read page, maybe page 90 to 95 of the attached resource. As you prepare, okay, resource, uh, take notes. Take notes on the following. Maybe there are some specific areas that you want them to be keen on within the resource, which will help you in the group activity. So I'm assuming that after this, maybe you have another activity that builds on to this acquisition activity. After you've given the learners instructions in the description, and make sure that as soon as you give you type in the description, it's always recommended that you can display the description on page. You see this checkbox? Yeah, make sure that it is checked in case you have put in it is the description or the instructions in the description, please. Then come here, you can either click this arrow or click this icon, which is to add, then apply uh, all files, click this option, then choose file, then pick your file, then upload the file. Give it a few minutes so that it is uh, successfully appended to your course before you scroll down and save. So uh, what are the steps here? Sorry. Doc? Hello. Yes, are the steps now? I followed it, yeah? Okay. Yes, it's clear, although it's, there is a bit of breaking on my end, I don't know. Okay, but I'll, I'll share the recording for the session so that you can review. Okay, so that is it about adding a file. So I'll, I'll, according to our, our, our topics, uh, we, the next one is how to use what you call a page. A page. No, but no, maybe before, before you go. Yes, go maybe ahead. Maybe before you proceed. Mm -hmm. There's something you did yesterday and there's something you've done today and I'm not sure whether where what I want to ask falls. Eh? Okay. Uh, sometimes you want to make sure that students don't jump from topic one to topic five and then to topic two to topic three. So you, you want to have a kind of a trigger, mm -hmm. which is a, a completion of a given task, mm -hmm. which automatically ushers a student to the next topic. Yes. In, in order to bring a kind of discipline that, look, uh, we have time, uh, which is specified, within which you must complete this task, and then you must move. And so if, if you lag behind, you'll be locked out and you'll not be able to proceed. And if you, I mean, if you don't complete a task. So mm -hmm. I don't know in the, whatever you did yesterday was that, and today you added this topic. And I'm not sure whether that's called or it's something I'm going to ask. Okay, thank you, Doc. Although I've lost you at the last statement, but I think I've got you. Clearly. So what Dr. Mohammed is talking about is what we call completion tracking. Called completion tracking. So you may want to track the completion of activities before students move to the next set of activities. And it's actually very important, especially if you have enabled completion tracking within your course setting. And thank you for asking that question. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show us how to set up a page a page resource, and, and uh, after I've done that, then I'll come back to show how you can actually implement completion tracking. We want the students to have read maybe the URL resource before they're able to access the notes. Are you seeing that? So you want to put some discipline so that the, 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 the resources are 
accessed systematically. So that's what we call completion tracking. So allow me to show you how to add the page resource. Then I'm going to come back to show you how you can do the completion tracking within your course. Is that okay, Dr. Muhambe? That's fine, that's fine. Okay, thank you so much. So I'll turn editing on and I'm going to show you how to add a page. I'm going to show you how to add a page. Uh, page is just the uh, page, P-A-G-E. Now, why is a page a very useful uh, resource? So a page is a useful resource because it allows you to be able to create learning materials that have multiple, that have multiple resource types included. So possibly you may want a students to read an excerpt, watch a video, maybe there's an image which they need to look at, which relates to, and you want also to attach an audio file. So you can actually create a very rich um, uh, learning package for the students using the page. So let's see how you add the page. Of course, as we've always done it, step number one, you must turn editing on. So ensure that your course is in edit mode as in my case right now. Then navigate the topic where you want to add the page. I'll tap to this topic. Then at the very end of that topic, click the button, add an activity or resource. And in this activity or resource chooser, we're going to pick page, this one, page, okay? So once you pick the page option, uh, this being topic one, so I'll, so this is my topic one, resources. So it's a page where I want to put together different types of resources that relate to topic one. And in my page, I'm going to give them a video to watch, a, a reading to, uh, some reading, se a section to read, a video to watch and uh, an audio podcast. I'm going to attach also an audio file. Possibly I have had done my lecture, audio lecture. Uh, I had recorded myself and I just want to attach it there so that the students can listen to the, the lecture um, recording. So let me go to the steps of how to go about that. So I'll give the instructions here under the description. Always note at the description, don't put content to instructions. Okay, so I'm going to tell the students you have been provided with uh, various resources in this link. Okay, you are required to watch the lecture video. Okay, review the diagram of the the system, uh, the organogram, maybe I'm teaching them on how to set up organizations. Uh, so how to set up organization and listen to the audio uh, lecture or the listen to the podcast where the lecturer provides further explanation on the organogram. Okay, so that's my instructions to the learner. So they're going to be provided various resources, which includes um, going to have a lecture video, they're going to have a diagram, and then they're going to have a podcast, where they're going to listen to the podcast, which uh, it contains more details related to the organogram diagram that we have provided them. So the content of the page is usually put up here under page content. This section which is indicated page content. That is where, where you start building your content. Huh? So the first resource I have told them I'm going to give them is, um, is a video. Okay. And I'm going to show you how you add your video. So assuming your video is on YouTube. Huh? I'll go to YouTube and pick my video. So maybe I'm teaching organizational structure. organizational structure. <clears throat> so I have identified this video to be the resource I want to include on my video, on my risk, on my page. So I'll pick the URL of the of the video. I'll pick the URL of the video up here. Then I'll come here under page content. I'll, I'll give instructions and say watch the provided video on organizational 
structure. So that's my my instruction to them. I'll give it a title. The title is organizational. So that's my my title. I can make it bold. I can uh, make it a heading. Okay. I've just made it a heading just for proper formatting. Put my cursor here where I want to add the video. Then there's this option here, which is, sorry, not that one, but this one, insert or edit an audio video file. This, uh, this option, I hope it's clear from your end. Let me just uh, enlarge the screen. So this one, if you hover over it, it indicates insert or edit an audio stroke video file. Click on it. Indicate that you want to add a video, a video to your page. Paste the URL of the video there. Then you can uh, give the display, uh, how the display uh, dimensions. So my video would be like uh, maybe 600 by 500. That is the display instruction. You can give the other settings as they are. Okay. Then once you're done, click insert media. So it will insert my video. Remember, I also want to include a, a diagram here. So I'll tell the students, uh, please. Okay, I'll tell them uh, the organo, organogram diagram. So here I'm giving them a sample of an organogram diagram. So I'll put the title, okay, and make it a heading. So I'm going to look for an image, which is the organogram, which I want to include here on my page. So I'll uh, what I'll do is I'll go online again and search for a, an image, an organization organogram. Huh? So assuming this is the this is the one I want to use, let me download it and save it on my on my machine so save image as let me save it on my downloads huh? oh, God. so i've say uh, i'm saving it on the under downloads so if i come to my page resource now i can be able to insert an image you see the option of inserting an image so if i over my mouse here this item insert or edit image so I click on it, then browse for my image from my computer. Should be on my downloads. This is it. Click on it and then upload this file. Give it time to attach. Seems to have been a very big one. Huh? Yes, there. It will ask me the dimensions. So the description is like this is an organogram. Organogram. Okay, the dimensions are there. I can increase it a bit to. Okay, then I can save image. So you see now I have created and I've added another resource to my page. So there's a video, there's an organogram, then there's some. I can put some notes. Uh, about the organogram, so you can add notes. Mm -hmm. So if you have some some notes, you can add them there. So you see, I've added some notes, and maybe now I want to add an audio podcast. So I recorded my audio, uh, and I would like to add it here, which is giving instructions or further explanations about the organogram. So. The, so to add an audio file, first of all, I must make sure my cursor is at the point where I want to add the, the file, eh? the audio file. Then I go back to my menu up here. I'll pick this menu again, insert or edit an audio or video file. This time I want to add an audio file. Okay. Then I'll browse for that file from my computer. All file, choose file. So assuming I had I had some audio recordings on my machine, I don't know whether it's still there. I had some, uh, hmm. I don't know whether it's still there, but uh, yeah, 
I look for it. Okay, like that that audio file. I have it. then upload this file. So I'm uploading that audio file. In case you have a question, you can always uh, draw my attention to a step that you want me to explain. Okay, you can always draw my attention, please. And that audio file was very big. Eh? Is there another one which is slightly smaller? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a smaller one. Actually, the thing, did I pick an audio file the first one? I need to confirm. Let me just go through the steps again. Audio file, choose file. Yeah, that is the MP3 file. Then I can upload this file. So I'm, I'm attaching the audio file. Yes, I can see there's a question. When is it appropriate to use a page in place of traditional way of adding resources? So um, a page, as you note, and like the attached notes, the page adds value because you, you're able to put different types of media. So you may have a video, you can have an audio file, you can have your notes, you can have a graphical representation of a concept. So it is richer than the attached notes, which are your PDF, your PowerPoint. And yes, you can have more than one video in a page, especially, especially if you're going to have a, a topic where you have created so many videos, it is advised that you can group the videos and then add them into pages. So the, the first subtopic may be having some three videos. It is advised that you put them in a page rather than attaching them on directly on the on the course homepage. So thank you for that question, Dr. Mm -hmm. Yes, now it is attached. So I'll just click insert media. And there, all right. So there my audio file has been attached. Once you're done, uh, make sure you save and return to course. So let us save and see how our output looks like. I'll turn editing off and I'll go to my page. Yes, this one, topic one resources. If you click on it, there is our video. See, there is our diagram. There is our text. And here is, is our, our podcast. Our audio. So you notice that a page is very useful, especially if you want to attach resources which are of multiple formats. So you have a video, you have an image, you have a, an audio file. It's best that you put them in a, in a page. It makes better presentation of the content. And like a file, which are your notes, which are your resources, which may, may just be the text format. Huh? This a page can present a very good opportunity to present learners with rich content, especially if one content type builds on the another. And for example, in this case, you see my audio recording could be a lecture I have provided, which is giving further details on this organogram that I have here. So maybe I have a diagram, and after the diagram, under it, I want to put an audio file, which gives further explanation to the students regarding that. So a page would be the best tool to use for that in that case. I hope I've answered your question, Dr. Mohambe. Any other question? Any other question from the participants? Okay, so let me move to the to the section uh, to the question that Dr. Muhambe asked about completion tracking. Completion tracking. Yes, I, I hear somebody has unmuted. Maybe you have a question. Is there someone who has a question? Okay, thank you. Um, the uh. Catherine and Catherine, those we had two Catherines. The other Catherine has dropped out. Catherine, I, mean, I was using computer and also my phone. 
because oh. in the computer it can display well but now there is power there is no power i'll use my phone but i was also in that uh, follow up question on mohammed what you were saying mm -hmm. uh, about that completion for example yesterday you talked about uh, setting of uh, giving the student assignments and you want them to complete by friday and after friday you don't want anybody else to attempt what are you going to do okay. so that those who have not attempted seems like they never attended to the class okay. thank you thank you so much so I'll, I'll also capture that when we'll be setting up assignment and let me go to the question which is also linked to what catherine is asking about computer. Now, in, in our resources, um, so in our resources, we've added a, a folder, a file, a URL, and we've added a page. And we want the students to be very systematic, that they must first they read the resources in the folder before they come to the resource, this particular file resource, before they, uh, then they come to this, and this. we want them to be very systematic. So in such instances, we usually implement completion tracking. And I'm going to show you how to go about it. Now, for a reading, for the resources, the only completion tracking is usually the students must view, because view, view activity, to view the activity for a resource means they have access to it. So, so let me come now to this topic one resource, which is the folder, okay? Which I, we had attached to. So if I come to the settings of this folder, and scroll down to, um, is it enable completion tracking in this course? I do not. So let me do this first before I get to that. Let me go to my settings and make sure that I have enabled completion tracking. It seems like computer tracking has not been enabled. So I, I need to set it to yes. So you must first make sure that completion tracking has been enabled in the course settings. So once you have enabled completion tracking in the course settings, now you can begin to put what you call completion conditions. So I'm going to come to my file resource, this resource, folder resource, click on it to open it, then click on the settings uh, uh, menu, this one, the settings of the, uh, of the folder resource. So I'm going to click on it. Then now that I've enabled completion tracking, I'm going to have this option now displayed, completion conditions. So under completion conditions, I can add requirements, okay? I can add requirements. I can now tell the system, how do you confirm that a student has completed this activity? Remember I said, because in most resources, the students are just supposed to view and read. Eh? So the condition is that the student must view this activity. And then I save and return to course. And then I'll do the same for my uh, my second resource, which was which was the notes. And notice what happens. Once you enable completion tracking for a, for a resource or an activity, Moodle will add this. Are you seeing this completion? So under each resource, it will now indicate the completion condition. You see that? So in this, our case, now the completion condition has been added and it is it is view. The student must view. So let's come to the second part, which is the notes. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to add a completion condition. Okay, I'm going to, oh, sorry. I'm going to click here, edit settings. And then I'll scroll down, completion condition, and add an act requirement that the student must view. But further to that, I can add a restriction, what Dr. Mohambe was asking. Before the student is able to read this resource, I want them to have read the notes, the, the folder resources above. Eh? So I can add restriction. You seeing that, Dr. Muhammad? So you can add what you call a restriction. So I want to tie this resource to a previous resource. So I'll add a restriction. And the restriction is that the student must complete an activity. And that activity will be listed here, that they must have read topic one resources, okay? So I have added the restriction that they cannot access topic one notes if they have not read the folder resources. And I've also added a completion condition. Then I save and return to course. Now I want you to see a, 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 um, 
something that happens. Are you seeing what it is telling me? Not available unless the activity, topic one, resource is marked complete. So before the student is able to read this topic one note, they must have accessed the topic one resource. And I'll do the same now for this link. Any student who wants to access this link must have finished the, the previous activity, which is topic one notes. So I'll do the same. So this uh, resource on AI policy and systems, I'll click these three vertical dots, click edit settings, and then I will come to completion condition and I'll add the requirement that a student must view this activity. And they can further restrict access to this activity by a activity completion. That for you to access this, you must have read topic one notes. And then I save and return to course. So uh, what, what I'm doing, you. yes? Just, just a quick one, sorry for, for that. The, for me, that is of interest. For example, if you say they must have viewed or read, eh? mm -hmm. sometimes the students just go and open it and then that's it, they don't read it. Eh? Is it possible to add something like a section for either comments or after you've read, maybe summarize whatever, something like that, so that that is an additional condition mm -hmm. that once they have viewed, they must post something here in line with that. Of course, the, the system might not be able to check the relevance of what they have posted, mm -hmm. but there must be something. And then, of course, you indicate that your comments that have been put here will be marked just to make the student a bit serious. Is that possible? Yes, yes, that it's possible. After reading? Yes. It's okay. okay. Yes, and I'm going to explain that when I'll be showing you how to add a discussion. Eh? So, as you have noted, for reading resources, eh, for the resource type of uh, um, activities or the reading activities, the only condition you can actually put is to view. But when it comes to other types of activities, such as a forum and assessment, assignment, you can add other conditions that Dr. Muhammad is referring to. And that's what I'm coming to because part of what we were supposed to learn today is how to add a discussion forum and how to add an assignment. So I'm going to come to that next. So let's see how you add a discussion forum. And after adding the discussion forum, let us see how you can put very complex activity completion conditions, which are tied to the notes. So for example, if somebody has viewed the notes and posted in the forum, that is when the system can now track for completion. So we're going to see how you can add more layers of completion conditions. But that is only possible when you're using tools such as discussion forum, assignment, and quizzes. It, is, it allows you to have more complex completion conditions. And let's see how this is done. So in the next activity, I'm going to show you how to add a discussion forum. So just as you have been doing before, you need to turn editing on so that your course is in edit mode. Scroll to the topic where you want to add the uh, activity. And this time we are adding a forum. We are adding a forum. So we want, a forum is a space where students are able to discuss, interact. So this is going to be our topic, one discussion forum. So this is the forum where the students are supposed to participate in. Now, as Dr. Muhambe has put it clearly, when you're putting up the discussion forum, you need to put the discussion instruction. And this is where now you can specify to the students. Huh? To the students, you are required huh? to have read, sorry, you are required to have read the topic, topic one notes and resources to participate uh, in this forum discussion, right? And then you can uh, give them the discussion questions, the discussion topics or questions. So you can tell them what you want them to discuss here. So you give the guidelines. I want you to discuss on the following aspects. You can display that. Then you need to choose the forum type and I would like to ask you to go read about different forum types and their uses in Moodle. Uh, also, the recordings I've shared also highlight more on this. 
And then in the forum, you can now come and put what you call completion conditions. If you click add requirements, you see the forum gives you more completion conditions. Huh? So you may want the students to start a discussion. You may just simply want them to post the replies. Okay. You may want them to have received a grade for the system to mark it as complete. Okay. So you you for the forum, it gives you more completion conditions that you can add to your to your activity completion. Then over and above that, remember we have told them that you must have read. So under the restrictions, we can put activity completion that before you access this forum, you must have read topic one resources. You must also have read topic one notes. Okay, are you saying that? So before you even access the forum, you must have read all the notes that have been attached. Then once you have read the notes and you come to participate in the forum, for the system to actually quantify that you have completed, then you can further add requirements. So you may just want them to post a discussion or reply. You may want them to start a discussion. You may want them to post replies. So you want them that they must reply to each other. You see, there are sometimes in class we want students to be very active. Okay, we want them to be very active. So, uh, and we want them to be active in contributing or critiquing other students' posts. So if it is that kind of scenario you want, make sure that you they start their own original discussion and over and above that, you force them to reply. If they don't do that, then the system will not mark them as having completed the forum activity. Then the other beauty of a forum is that you can grade a discussion forum. So a forum is not only just used for discussion and interaction, can further be used for, for assessment. So in case you intend to, use, to grade the students' contributions in the forum, you come to the rating setting, then indicate the way you want the system to account for the ratings. Because if a student has posted more than once in the discussion forum, then it means that the system can do an average of their rating, or it can count the number of times they have posted, how many times have they been rated. It can take the highest rating. So if a student has posted like three or four times that you have graded them, the system can pick the highest, the lowest, or do a, a sum total of the ratings. But I usually prefer average rating. So if a student has posted more than once in the forum that have graded all their postings, then the system will actually take an average. And for each post, I want to post out of five points. Huh? Okay. And it's also good, a good culture that as you're setting up the, the discussion forum, you can put the rubric and indicate if you have four to five points, uh, you get four to five points. If you do what? If you post relevant, if your post is relevant and use of examples. Okay. Then you can tell them you get three, three to two to three points. Huh? So you can actually come up with a rubric. Huh? If you just uh, give a relevant post and you get one point, if you just uh, post, make a post for making a post. So, you know, even, in, even, even as you set up the discussion forum, you can actually even come up with a small rubric. You can come up with a small rubric to guide the learners so that they know that they are required to have read the textbooks which are provided. Then they'll be graded. So you can tell them, note your discussion will be graded as follows. Okay, then you give them how you're going to grade them. And then you give them the discussion questions. Then when it comes to the settings, remember you're grading. So you need to enable the rating options. And rate it by how many points? Five points. Okay, as in my case, you, you may choose to rate out of 10. You create your own rationale. Then um, you can put the restriction that if you have not read the topic notes, you cannot access the forums. 
and then put the activity completion. In this forum, you must start a discussion and you must reply to at least one person in the discussion for you to have been, and possibly because we are grading, we can add that you must receive a grade. Then you save and return to course. So you realize that the, for, the discussion forum is a very, gives you a rich set of conditions that you can include within your, your discussion. And if you check the completion condition, the student must start a discussion, post a reply, and also receive a grade. So if, if a student hasn't met these three conditions, within the activity completion report, they will not feature as having attempted this. And further to that, you see it, uh, this, the, the forum is restricted until you have read the topic one resources, which are provided up here. So Dr. Mohamed, does that answer your question as well as uh, Catherine? Yes, 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 that does. Maybe just one little thing. Can, can you do the same now when going from topic one to two? Yes, you can three? do that. Yes, yes, wow. you can do that. Beautiful. So if, if this topic, discussion forum, topic one discussion forum is a critical completion condition, if they come to topic two, you see topic two. Now, if you turn yes. everything on, you want them that you cannot move to topic two unless you have completed whatever, all this that has been provided in topic one. So what you do, you come to your topic two, make sure you have turned editing on. So you see where I am at, topic two, and or the, the, there are three vertical dots. Are you seeing these three vertical dots which are just on top of the topic area, the topic mm -hmm. two? There is, a, you can uh, be able to edit topic. You see the option of edit topic? This one, you click edit topic. Then once you edit the topic, you can restrict access. So in this case, I will restrict access to topic two based on a given activity. And that activity will be topic one discussion forum. So as soon as somebody, as long as somebody has not done the topic one discussion forum to satisfactory levels and having as per the conditions provided, you cannot get to topic two. So you can actually restrict an entire topic based on activity completion from the previous topic. So you can see it saying topic two, not available, at least the activity, unless the activity topic one forum is marked complete, which is the last activity in the previous topic. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. So what, what, what I want you to note, remember yesterday we talked about reports. reports? So as uh, one of the reports that will be generated if you have put completion tracking is this report. It's called activity completion report, this report. So this report is usually generated by the system based on your activity completion. Okay? Uh, so all the activities and resources, the forum folders. So it will actually generate, as soon as you have students, it will be generating the activity completion report. Yes, this one. So it will begin to generate this report for you. And it will have the student list and all the activities that have been tracked for completion. So any activity that you have for completion tracking will be included in your activity. And it will actually mark the students who have done it. Yes. So, um, so thank you, Dr. Muhambe, for the questions that you have asked. Thank you so much, Catherine. Uh, your questions really add value to the discussion. Uh, I would uh, like to take this opportunity to welcome Mumbok, Gladys. Mumbok, were you with us yesterday? I don't quite remember, but Karibu Sana. Gladys, welcome. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do now is to handle a question that was asked yesterday about groups. Uh, there was a question that was asked about groups. So remember, we looked at how to add groups to our course. And once you have added groups to your course, and maybe I can review the steps, we talked about the participants menu here, and the participants menu as being very important when it comes to creating groups. So if you come to the participants menu, then you come to enrolled users, then you pick this menu item called enrolled users, then click on groups, you're able to create groups in your course. So you can, uh, I'm going to create two groups. So this is group, group one, Uh-huh, I'll create that group, group one. Then I'll create another group, 
Group two. Group two. So I'm going to create a group two with the same ID number. So I've created two groups in my course. Okay. So I want students to add themselves to the group. I want students to add themselves to the group. So in such instances, um, and I'm going to do this for the Alupe University uh, Learning Management System, there is an activity called group choice. So it is an additional activity that you add. Eh? So we are going to add it to your course. It's called group choice. Are you seeing this activity? Group choice. So using the group choice activity, if you click on it, you set it up on your course. Uh, so I'm going to call this choose a group. Okay. I'm going to... And I'm going to share this recording so that you can practice it on your end. So the name of my activity is group choice. I'll give instructions and the instructions are tell the You are required eh, to join one. You are expected to join a group by clicking on this link. Please note, some of the activities in the course require that you are a member of a group to be able to attempt them. Okay, so that is the instruction and I'll display. Once you put the instructions, you can uh, Pick the groups. So these are the two groups I created in my course notes, right? and then add them in the group selection so that they are presented to the students to be able to select groups. In some instances, you have already determined the cap. You want that the students should not be more than five in a group. So if you have already determined, you can enable the limitation and say five. So each group, already I have determined maybe my class has only 10 participants. So each group will have a maximum of five. So you can actually determine the cap, okay? So that as soon as the group gets to five, the students cannot be able to, to add themselves to that group, okay? Then you can, you can put some completion condition, require that the students must view this activity so that the students don't miss it, then save them. So what I've just done is I have created a link called group choice. But when the students come to your course and they click choose a group, okay, it will give them an opportunity to be able to select a course. Of course, it's telling me that I cannot add myself because I'm not enrolled, but yes, I can enroll myself into the course, but I don't want to. So the students should be able to click this button and then click this button, enroll me. Okay, enroll, uh, add me to the group. I think I'll just add myself to this course so that it makes sense. So I'm going to add myself as a student. Huh? Mm -hmm. So I've just enrolled myself into that course. So if I now uh, refresh this page, oh, it's telling me group choices are full. Let me see. Oh yeah, it's because of here. I, need, I, I had put a cap to zero, so it needs to be five. Then I'll click apply to all groups. You seeing that? I forgot that. Eh? If you're putting a limitation to the number of uh, people who can join a group, make sure you click, click this apply to all groups. So I'll save and display. So now I can add myself to a group. Save my choice. Okay. Yeah. We're going to add the same feature to your LMS so that in case you're designing courses where you intend students to be in groups, you can click simply cl create your groups and then add this activity, choose a group. So when the students click on the activity, choose a group, they can add, enroll themselves into a, a group. So uh, in tomorrow's session, we're going to see how we can create, because I'm, I'm seeing like today's session was really packed. I was hoping to do adding activities, that is a forum, sorry, a quiz and assignment item number four of our agenda, but I'm seeing like today's agenda was really packed. I just want to package this recording and share with us so that we can review what we have learned today. 
And then tomorrow I'll start with item number four. So tomorrow I'll focus on assessment, how to create quizzes and how to create assignments. And, 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 and I hope to also um, I review what we learned in terms of creating multimedia and using H5P. I list the agenda items for tomorrow's discussion. So I hope Dr. Uh, um, Dr. Muhambe, because you're the one who asked that question, I hope it has been sufficiently answered. Yes, thank you very much. Um, let me add a crazy one. You can look at this tomorrow if possible. I don't know whether that's uh, assuming the student goes through the course and reaches topic 14. Let's assume the, we are going up to week 14. Mm -hmm. And that is the precondition for enrolling into an exam space, assuming they are going to do an exam online. Eh? Mm. Is there a way Moodle allows for linking of the course space to that exam space so that, mm -hmm. um, like if a student completes week 14, mm -hmm. they're eligible to sit for that particular exam and the exam space can allow for self-enrollment. I don't know. I'm just, it's just a crazy thinking I have. Yes, it is. It's actually possible. Uh, <laughs> but it, that is too technical for, for now. Okay. But Moodle has what you call meta courses. Eh? So you can have a course which is a child of another course. But that's at the technical level. So that's something we can do. Maybe me, you, and, and mostly yeah? how to implement that in a course. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank Mostly, uh, Mkubwa, Chairman, 